Welcome to this companion video for the Click MIDI Melodica. This video is going to help you understand how this instrument works, specifically how to calibrate the melodica, how to play it, and what the different options are that we can choose between on the instrument. Throughout this, we're going to dip our toes a tiny bit into the code that makes it all work. And finally, we're going to have a look at some different failure modes, so things that can go wrong with the instrument, what problems that might cause, and some things we can do to solve those problems. This is not a tutorial on how to make this instrument. That will be in a separate video, and I'll put a link to that down in the description. So whether you made the Click Melodica using the Continuum Lab instrument kit, uh, or maybe you downloaded the code from GitHub and sourced the components yourself, or maybe someone else made it and now somehow it found its way into your hands and you're wondering what to do with it. This is the video for you. Let's get into it. Calibrating the click melodica is a bit different than the other click instruments, and that's because of the way the keys work. See, these keys are read in the code with what in Arduino is called a digital read, rather than the capacitive touch read that most of the click instruments use. That means that there is no need to calibrate the keys, just the breath sensor. What is the same as in all the other instruments is the calibration sequence, and it's very simple. First, press the calibration button and hold it. The LED on the Teensy microcontroller will turn on for half a second, after which you're ready to calibrate. Don't release the button yet. Now you blow in the breath sensor. Make sure that you put in the same pressure when you calibrate as you will want to blow with when you play. Once you're done, you can release the button again. The melodica is now calibrated, but you still need to save the calibration to memory or it would be lost on reset. So to do that, you just press the calibration button again, this time with three presses in quick succession. After the third press, the LED on the Teensy will blink three times, which confirms that the calibration has been saved. Keep in mind that the tension on the membrane in the breath sensor is important for this to work properly. If it's too tense or too loose, you might not be able to get the calibration to your liking. One final thing, the melodica needs to be reset after calibrating, or the keys are not read properly. You do this by unplugging and plugging back in the USB. This is a bit of a weird quirk, but not really that much of a problem. Remember, if you save the calibration, then it stays on the chip until you change it. So the next time you pick up the instrument, it's already on there. So no need to calibrate or go through the reset routine. Okay, that's calibrating. As for actually playing the melodica, there's really nothing to it. The keys are laid out in a standard piano pattern. The 16 key version starts on a B natural, and the 32 key version starts on F natural. The instrument works just like an actual melodica, in the sense that you need to blow in the mouthpiece while pressing the keys to make a sound. Just pressing the keys alone does nothing. And just blowing without activating any keys also does nothing at all. So you can blow constantly and use the keys to make percussive notes or chords like this. Or you can press some keys and then blow to fade on or off notes or chords like this. There's no limit to the number of simultaneous keys, except maybe how large your hands are. The Click Melodica in itself is highly capable, of course depending on how well it was made and all that. But if you're able to make nice music with an acoustic melodica, then you'll definitely be able to do it on this one as well. I'm not particularly good at keyboard instruments in general, so this is the best I can do. One cool thing about a melodica is that if you put in a longer tube, then you can also comfortably play it as a desktop instrument. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, now let's have a look at those options. The first and most obvious one is the number of keys. And it's selected by inserting a jumper on option pin 0. 
This is how you tell the software what instrument is connected to it. So if I remove that jumper on this instrument here and then reset it, it now thinks it's a 16 key melodica. So it will play a B natural on this low F natural key. And then go up to here. After which it will simply ignore the rest of the keys. There are two more options as well. One is universal for all click instruments and it simply changes the entire MIDI output stream from channel 1 to channel 2 in case you need channel 1 for something else. Channel 2 output is activated by inserting a jumper into option pin 2. The final option applies to all click instruments that use a breath sensor and it changes the default MIDI output for the breath signal from CC number 2, which is a standard breath controller signal, and to CC number 7, which is channel volume. This can be useful if your synthesizer doesn't accept continuous controller number 2, although of course the effect is generally very different. This option is activated by plugging in a jumper on the click analog pin 9 between the signal and ground pins. The reason why it's not on option pin 1 is that some of the click wind instruments already use all of the option pins for more important stuff. Finally, we need to look at some different problems that might occur with this instrument. The first one I'll mention has to do with the reset after calibration issue that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. If you blow in the breath sensor and you get this, then you almost certainly just calibrated the instrument and you forgot to save and then reset afterwards. If you don't do that, then the melodica reads all the keys as on, all the time. Not pretty. Next, the breath sensor. The problems that you might encounter here are the same as on any other wind instrument in the Continuum Lab instrument kit. So excuse me if you've heard this before, but here goes. One thing that might happen is that you get a constant or intermittent low level output from the breath sensor, even when not blowing in it. This is normally caused by having the balloon membrane too loose, allowing it to move around. So in the case of this 3D printed sensor, that would mean having a water balloon which is too large for the plastic disc inside it. Either get a smaller balloon or make a bigger disc. If you're working with this other kind of sensor setup, then you should be able to just tense the membrane up manually. Any other kind of loose components within the breath sensor setup which allow movement can also cause this problem. The opposite problem might also occur. Having a membrane which is too tense will mean that you will have to blow really hard in the sensor to get any output at all, which will give you less sensitivity even after calibrating. Simply adjust opposite to what I just said to fix this. If the breath sensor only outputs noise, then you might have the three cables plugged in the wrong way around or in the wrong order. Make sure that ground goes to ground and so on. The last thing I'll mention has to do with the keys. Of my two Melodica prototypes, this one is surprisingly the one that has the most reliable keys. If a key appears to be failing or only connecting intermittently, the cause might be the conductive metal tape on the key itself. Maybe the geometry of the key doesn't make for a good connection, or maybe some dirt got in there between the contacts. Have a close look at the contacts and try to figure out why the contact is failing. Clean it out if you have to. As I said, this cardboard prototype has proven to be quite stable and as a consequence I actually prefer it to this other much cooler looking one. But I'm still working on improving this aspect of the 3D printed Click Melodica keys and I'll make sure to keep you updated on my progress right here on the channel. The Click Melodica is quite a cool instrument and certainly one of the most popular Click projects if I measure it by the number of views on the original introduction videos. But of course the Continuum Lab instrument kit also features a capacitive keyboard, which I call the C board, which can also be turned into a melodica by simply adding a breath sensor, and which can also do a whole bunch more, like velocity, continuous volume output or aftertouch. So is that better? Or does the fact that this one has actual moving keys make it automatically cooler? I'll leave that up to you. Go check out the video about the C board if you're curious, and let me know in the comments what you think. And that's it for this companion video. I hope you found it useful and that it helped you understand the potential and possibilities of the Click Melodica. If you're interested in buying one of these kits for yourself or for a geeky friend or family member, then you can do that over at continuumlab.com where I sell both the Continuum Lab instrument kit itself as well as various types of Click instruments. The complete kit 
comes with all of the necessary sensor materials and components to make both this instrument as well as a bunch more. And all of those instruments come pre-programmed onto the microcontroller within the kit. So even complete beginners can get started making cool MIDI instruments with zero coding and simple techniques. And of course you can check out the build tutorial for the Melodica as well as the other click instruments from the links in the description. Take care until next time and I'll see you in the continuum.